My beautiful friends and bookish fam, my name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad to have you. And if you are already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today, we are here to talk about some new releases coming out in February of 2024. So as you can see, I'm filming a little bit differently today. I'm moving some things around in my office and this is just what I'm working with currently. I'm looking into getting a tripod for my phone, like an actual tall standing tripod so that I can better position myself within this room, which is very, very tiny and is filling up very quick. I have outgrown this room 100% and so things are piling up all over the place and I'm just kind of working with what I got. So this is just temporary. I don't think I'm going to be sticking in this location and I don't know how the lighting is going to look or anything like that. So I apologize, but this should only be temporary. Temporary. Anyway, as I mentioned, we are going to talk about some of the releases coming out in February. Now, if you've watched my book of the month prediction video, you will know that there are a ton of releases coming out in February, a lot of notable ones as well. And a lot of those I actually felt were strong book of the month contenders. So none of the books I talked about in that video are going to be featured here. So please be sure to check out that video if you are interested in some of those releases. Even still, I was able to collect 15 other books that I didn't mention in that video that I'm going to talk about here. So this is going to be another longer one. I'm going to do my best to not take up too much time discussing what each of these books are about. I'm going to just read any little blurbs that I can. If there's no blurbs, I will read the synopsis of it. But this is just to give you an idea of what the book is about so you can make an educated decision on whether or not you want to add it to your radar. As always, this list is not meant to be comprehensive. These are just books that are personally on my radar or books that I think you specifically would want on your radar. Starting with the very first Tuesday in February, which is going to be the 6th, we actually have one of the new releases coming out from Brina McFadden this year. There are actually going to be at least two Freda McFaddens coming out this year. And the one in February February is called The Teacher. This is a very short synopsis, so I'll just read it. It says, lesson number one, trust no one. Eve has a good life. She gets up each day, gets a kiss from her husband, Nate, and heads off to teach math at the local high school. All is as it should be, except last year, Caseman High was rocked by a scandal with one student, Addie, at its center. And this year, Eve is dismayed to find the girl in her class. Addie can't be trusted. She lies, she hurts people, she destroys lives. At least that's what everyone says. But nobody knows the real Addie. Nobody knows the secrets that could destroy her. And Addie will do anything to keep it quiet. This is another story that kind of makes me a little bit nervous just because it sounds like it's going to take place in a high school setting. We have a teacher perspective, but we also might have the teenager perspective. I'm not really sure how it's going to go, but I'm kind of willing to trust Frieda McFadden at this point, especially since I've read two books and I've really enjoyed them. And so I'm definitely going to be picking this one up at some point after it comes out. And so I think a lot of you might be Frieda McFadden fans as well. And I wanted to be sure to mention this here. This next release coming out on the 6th is actually not one that I'm really interested in because it's an anthology, but it does seem like a very fascinating anthology that takes place in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. It's called 14 Days. It is edited by Margaret Atwood and Douglas Preston. And it says, set in a Lower East Side tenement in the early days of the COVID-19 lockdowns, 14 Days is a surprising and irresistibly propulsive novel with an unusual twist. Each character in this diverse, eccentric cast of New York neighbors has been secretly written by a different major literary voice from Margaret Atwood and Douglas Preston to Tommy Orange and Celeste Ng. So basically this is going to follow multiple different characters, each voice voiced by a different major author. Some other authors included in this are John Grisham, Diana Gabaldon, Neil Gaiman, Candace Bushnell, Nora Roberts. There are a ton of really notable names in this story. So if you are a fan of anthologies, definitely keep this one on your radar coming out on the 6th. Also coming out on the 6th is this really adorable sounding rom-com called When Grumpy Met Sunshine by Charlotte Stein. And this book sounds like it's going to have all of the tropes. So naturally it's going to have the grumpy sunshine trope. It also sounds like it's going to have a fake dating trope when an opposite attract trope, a steamy opposites attract romance with undeniable chemistry between a grumpy retired footballer and his famous and very sunshiny ghostwriter. So it sounds like it's going to follow an ex-footballer named Alfie who is getting badgered into selling his memoirs and he knows that he's not going to write them himself. So he hires Mabel Williker, a curvy, cheery, cute ghostwriter who knows just how to sunshine and sass her way into getting every little detail out of Alfie. They banter and bicker their way to writing his life story, both of them sure they'll never be anything other than at all. But after their business arrangement is mistaken for a budding romance, the pair have to pretend to be an item for a public who's ravenous for more of this Cinderella story. Or at least it feels like it's pretend until each slow burn step in their fake relationship sparks a heat neither can control. I just get a smile on my face just reading the synopsis of that. It sounds absolutely adorable and I think it's going to be a good one. We also have the newest release from Suzanne Redfern coming out on the 6th. It is called Where Butterflies Wander. I have read two books by Suzanne Redfern and for the most part they're okay. I thought in an instant 
stint was really interestingly written and it provoked me to read more from her. So I read another book by hers called Hadley and Grace, which was kind of supposed to be inspired by Thelma and Louise. And it was, it was just okay. So I don't necessarily know if I'm going to be picking this up, but I think it's notable enough to mention. So it sounds like this is going to follow the loss of a child. And it says after she loses her child, Marie Ajid is desperate to carve out a fresh start for her family. With her husband and their three surviving children, Marie travels to New Hampshire, where she plans to sell a family estate. And then just maybe they'll be able to heal from their grief. Marie's plans are thwarted when she realizes a war veteran known by locals as the River Witch is living in a cabin on the property, which she claims was a gift from Marie's grandfather. If Davina refuses to move on, Marie won't be able to either. The two women clash and battle lines are drawn within Marie's family and the town as each side fights for what they believe is right. The tension rising until it reaches its breaking point and the choice is no longer theirs when a force bigger than them all, fate, takes control. So that certainly sounds like it's going to have some harder hitting elements. It's going to deal with grief. Y'all know that I love reading stories dealing with grief. It sounds like this might be like a healing book for both the mom who lost her child and the woman that's living on the property. And I just think that it could be very raw and emotional and hard hitting. So it's on my radar and I wanted to go ahead and make sure it was on yours as well. Then the last one that I want to talk about from February 6th is actually a new fantasy release by Robert Jackson Bennett with a new series that he is starting. And I know he's a really well-known author of the Foundry Side series or something like that. I've never read anything by him, but this newest release is called The Tainted Cup. It is the first in his Shadow of the Leviathan series. And this synopsis is very long. I don't want to read the entire thing. This blurb just says, featuring an unforgettable Holmes and Watson style pairing, a gloriously labyrinthine plot and a haunting and wholly original fantasy world, The Tainted Cup brilliantly reinvents the classic mystery tale. So that actually sounds really interesting. It definitely feels like it's going to be incredibly atmospheric. I like the idea of a Holmes and Watson pairing. So it sounds like there is going to be a mystery solved within a fantasy world. Like I said, I've never read anything by Robert Jackson Bennett before, but I know that he is well loved. And so if you have read any of his previous works, you might be interested in this one again coming out on the 6th. Moving on into the 13th of February, I'm just going to mention this first one briefly. It is the newest novel by T. Kingfisher. It is called What Feasts at Night, and it is a follow-up to What Moves the Dead. Because of that, I don't want to read the synopsis or anything for fear of spoilers. I'm not sure if they're just companion novels, if you really need to read one before the other, but just in case, I don't want to risk spoiling anything for anybody. So if you have read What Moves the Dead, this is a sequel that is coming out on the 13th of February. Also on the 13th, we have the newest release from Tessa Bailey. We have another rom-com in what it sounds like is going to be the start of a new romantic comedy series called Big Shots. The first book is called Fangirl Down. There's not really a blurb here, so let me just read through this synopsis really quick. It says, Wells Whitaker was once golf's hottest rising star, but lately all he has to show for his promising career is a killer hangover, a collection of broken clubs, and one remaining supporter. No matter how bad he plays, the beautiful sunny redhead is always on the sidelines. He curses, she cheers. He scowls, she smiles. But when Wells quits in a blaze of glory and his fangirl finally goes home, he knows he made the greatest mistake of his life. Josephine Doyle believed in the gorgeous grumpy golfer, even when he didn't believe in himself. Yet after he throws in the towel, she begins to wonder if her faith was misplaced. Then a determined Wells shows up at her door, asking her to be his new caddy, help him turn his game around, and split the prize money. And considering Josephine's professional and personal life is in shambles, she could really use the cash. As they travel together, spending days on the green and nights in neighboring hotel rooms, sparks fly. Before long, they're inseparable. Wells starts winning again, and Josephine is surprised to find a sweet, thoughtful guy underneath his gruff, growly exterior. This hot man wants to brush her hair, feed her snacks, and take bubble baths together? Is this real life? But Wells is technically her boss, and an athlete falling for his fangirl would be ridiculous, right? So again, in typical Tessa Bailey fashion, this just sounds cute, sweet, fun, heartwarming, sounds like another grumpy sunshine kind of romance, definitely a sports romance as the main character is a golfer. I personally am not going to be reading any more Tessa Bailey just because even though I think she's a great writer and she definitely can do the steamy scenes and the chemistry, her romances don't pack the emotional punch that I typically look for. So ultimately they just end up being pretty forgettable in my opinion, but I know that she's got a huge fan base out there. And so I definitely wanted to bring this to your attention in case you do love Tessa Bailey. Again, this newest release is coming out on the 13th. And then the final book I want to talk to you about coming out on the 13th is a rom-com, but it sounds like with a speculative twist, this just says a magically gifted con artist must gather her estranged mother's old crew for a once in a lifetime heist. Again, I don't really want to read this whole thing because it is very, very long. But again, it sounds like there's going to be a heist. There's going to be magical elements. And it sounds like there could also be a cute little romance in here. This is another one that's been going around. And I just thought it sounded like a lot of fun. But again, unfortunately, early reviews for this are not great. It has a 3.45 on Goodreads with 142 ratings. So just keep that in mind. But this is certainly one that is currently on my radar and I thought you might like it too. All right, moving on into the 20th of February, we have A Step Past Darkness by Vera Kurian. Now she wrote a book called, I believe, Never Saw Me Coming, which if I remember correctly, is kind of a vengeance story. Now I don't really remember the synopsis of that, but that was why it was on my radar because I believe Audrey from Chapter and Converse read it and really liked it. And I kind of dug the synopsis of it, but I've never read anything by her. However, I was kind of intrigued by this 
one because it sounds like it's going to follow, you know, those high school students who were all very close at one time and then they did something and now it's coming back to haunt them. And I'm always just a sucker for those premises. So it says, there's something sinister under the surface of the idyllic suburban town of Wesley Falls. And it's not just the abandoned coal mine that lies beneath it. The summer of 1995 kicks off with a party in the mine where six high school students witness a horrifying crime that changes the course of their lives. The six couldn't be more different. And when they realize that they can't trust anyone but each other, they begin to investigate what happened on their own. As tensions escalate in town to a breaking point, the six make a vow of silence, bury all their evidence, and promise to never contact each other again. Their plan works, almost. 20 years later, Gia calls them all back to Wesley Falls. Maddie has been murdered, and they are the only ones who can uncover why. But to end things, they have to return to the mine one last time. So again, I'm just a sucker for that kind of thing, although I haven't really seen it executed very well recently, and because I haven't read Vera Curian, I really don't know what her capabilities are as an author to make this plot actually work, but I just kind of love that concept. It's very, I know what you did last summer, so I'm very interested to see. If you all have read Vera Curian in the past, please let me know what your thoughts are and if you think that this would be worth picking up. Also on the 20th is the newest release from BA Paris called The Guest. It says, Iris and Gabriel seem to have it all. A beautiful home in the British countryside, a daughter happily working in Greece, and good friends Laura and Pierre from Paris, who they often vacation with. But when a young man has a tragic accident in a nearby quarry, Gabriel is the one to find him and hear his final words, leaving Gabriel with a guilty burden. As Iris tries to help ease her husband's trauma, they acquire an unexpected house guest. Laura has seemingly moved in after her husband's revelation that he has had a child with another woman. Iris and Gabriel insist Laura stay as long as she needs, but Laura keeps wearing Iris's clothes, following her every move and asking her about the recent death of the young man. Their only respite from the increasingly tense atmosphere in their own home comes from a couple new to town and expecting their first child, but with them comes their gardener who has a checkered past. With fractured relationships and secrets piling up around them, can Iris and Gabriel's marriage survive? That seems a little bit all over the place to me. There are definitely a lot of characters and a lot of different things going on, and I'm not sure how it's all going to come together. I have enjoyed BA Paris in the past. Nothing really has surpassed behind closed doors for me in terms of like the creep factor and the thrill factor. Everything else has just kind of been more on the mediocre side. I haven't necessarily decided whether or not I'm going to continue with her. I do have another book of hers on my shelves called The Therapist, and if that really doesn't do it for me, I don't think I will continue, but I do find her books very engaging, very compulsively readable. They keep the pages turning and you just kind of want to know what's going to happen. So we'll see. This definitely sounds interesting, but like I said, it sounds kind of chaotic as well. So I'm not really sure how I feel about that one. Also on the 20th, we have a really interesting historical fiction coming out called The Hidden Life of Cecily Larson. It's written by Ellen Baker. This says it's a combination of orphan train meets water for elephants and this compelling multi-generational novel of survival, love, and the families we make. And I can definitely tell you that it is set in two timelines. One is in 1924 and one is in 2015. And it says, sweeping through a long period of contemporary history, the hidden life of Cecily Larson is an immersive, compelling, and entertaining family drama centered around one remarkable woman and her determination to survive. I personally do not love reading books set in circuses. That is definitely not my vibe, especially because the way that they treat animals in the circus, like I will not attend a circus today and I don't like reading about circuses in the past. I also haven't read Water for Elephants for like exactly that same reason, but I know that is a very beloved historical fiction and I've heard that it's beautifully written and everything like that and it sounds like this is going to have some of those same elements along with a combination of orphan train. So if you liked both of those books, if you like circus environments, this is certainly one to have on your radar coming out on the 20th. And then of course the very last book that I'm going to mention for February is one that's supposed to come out at the very end. Hi friends, editing Brittany here. So the book that I'm about to talk about in this clip is Empire of the Damned by Jay Kristoff. I was going based off of of a good read state that said February 29th, which was unusual unto itself since the 29th is not a Tuesday. The 29th of February is actually a Thursday. I was going off of that and then when I was editing this video and I was double checking dates, everywhere else says March 12th. So I'm going to go ahead and put a pin in this for now and talk about it in my March release video. All right, everybody, that is it. Those are the new releases that I wanted to bring to your attention for February. Please comment down below and let me know what new releases I may have missed that you are excited for. And again, I did mention a lot of other February new releases in that book of the month prediction video. So please be sure to head to that video if you want to hear more amazing new releases that are coming out in February. Or if you've made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me an apple emoji in honor of the teacher by Freedom. Y'all know that I absolutely love seeing your comments down below. I love the engagement and it helps my channel so very much. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I post two videos a week on Wednesday and Sundays and I would love to connect with you in all of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms which I always leave linked down below along with the books that I may talk about in a video. Until next time y'all. Bye.